Today we will be looking at some of the greatest wool jackets from the 20th and 21st century. And I have cheekily added my own jacket from my own clothing company to that lineup of jackets. And uh, that's what we're talking about at the end of this video. I think it's a contender. I really think it is. We shall of course be going over wool weight, fit, insulation power if you need a lining, features of the jackets, and we'll also be, there's a jacket in this list that doesn't fit at all. I was very disappointed when I opened the package, but I think I was categorizing it in the wrong area, because it is fantastic, but not if you're trying to look for an alternative to what we're talking about today, which is gnarly outdoorsmen need to survive in the wilderness wool jackets. So I ordered a Woolrich jacket for this section and the mail ate it. It never came. So we have to cancel this section. We will pick it up in a different video. I promise. I wish mine came. Had a cool patch on it. A lot of people have a lot of different things to say about Filson, but you can't argue they are the powerhouse of heritage wool outerwear. They, Filson is the, it's, you say, where should I get a wool jacket? Everyone says Filson. I, of course, got a Filson, but I didn't want to just get a single Mackinac Cruiser like they're offering today. So I looked around on eBay and found the tank, the double Mackinac Cruiser. Three pounds and 15 ounces. I'm giving weights of each jacket just so you can know kind of where it is on the warmth ratio. But this wool is either 24 ounce per square linear yard or 26 ounce per square linear yard. This jacket specifically that I have right now is from the 80s and you can tell because of the Woolmark logo on the back neck tag. The booby pockets here, they open up because this is part of a cape. So you have two layers of wool that helps with wind, that helps shed rain, snow, whatever it may be. Just kind of falls off the jacket and you have a full layer of wool underneath. Hey, do me a favor, just ignore my terrifying looks to the camera. I don't know what I was thinking during these shots. So you still stay very warm and there's less chance of you getting soaked through. But that that I'm describing is essentially just a cape coat, which Filson offers. This is special. The entire top of the jacket is two layers of wool, including the sleeves. Then there is one other thing that makes this a jacket and a half, not even counting the double part. Back here is a map pocket where you could stick a map. I usually put my mittens or something back here a little easier. Not fashionable though. All in all though, I actually have to end this video short and drive to Massachusetts, but I will say this jacket is unbelievable quality, the attention to detail. The only thing that's kind of annoying now that everybody on YouTube talks about is the prices for Filson. Now that I'm making my own jackets, I know they're pretty darn high, especially when you compare Filson's infrastructure to my infrastructure. Pretty darn up there. This is the product I was talking about in the beginning of the video where I said, I don't remember what I said, frankly, but it was like, it's not what you're probably going to expect for $600. Oops, hello, me from the future. I would, two things I forgot to say. One, this the snow crest weighs two pound, one ounces, and two, what is this shirt? Why is it $600? Is it good and will you be disappointed? And the answer is you will only be disappointed if you are expecting to get to any of the other jackets that I'm talking about today. Weatherwool, Anorak, the Mammoth, Filson, and Woolrich. These, this will be the greatest disappointment you ever open. But if that's not what you're expecting, and you're expecting a shirt jacket that is made with the utmost care and amazing materials, you couldn't be happier. And here is where we introduce the magic of fine woolen fibers. Even though Filson is trying to do holiday sales and all that crap, these jackets are still incredibly expensive, but our sponsor today, Carrot, makes that a lot easier. This video is sponsored by Carrot, where you can get up to 90% off anything you want without a coupon. I'm gonna do it with these jackets right now in front of your very eyes. You see, Carrot has this really nifty feature. Ugh called Deal Hop, where the team at Carrot took AI and said, hey, I bet we can find the best price of any item you're looking for anywhere easily. All you have to do is click Deal Hop. Getting Carrot and Deal Hop is incredibly simple. All you have to do is hop on over to the App Store, download it there, or you can get the extension for Google Chrome and make shopping easier and better. Also, it's not only Deal Hop that Carrot has to make your life easier. You know when you have 50 tabs open of things you want to look at later, but when is later and you can't shut down your computer or close your phone? Instead of having all those tabs open, you can quickly add them to a Carrot collection and look at them whenever you want. And when you want to buy something from that list, you can Deal Hop it to make sure you get the best price possible. All you have to do is download or install the app or extension today and Thank Carrot for sponsoring this video. Little background on Duckworth. All of their wool comes from the Heli Ranch in Dillon, Montana. That's them, essentially. They have sheep, Rambouillet Merino sheep. We'll talk about them in a second. And their attention to detail is absolutely insane. They're not really hidden features, but just really subtle features that show you have an heirloom piece. You have an incredibly high quality 
shirt jack in front of you. Number one, every single place on this shirt jacket that can experience a high amount of wear, which is very important when we're talking about Rambouillet or Merino wool in general, has a reinforced fabric on the back of it. So the placket, the cuffs, the interior dump dump pocket. It actually doesn't say with that reinforcing material, maybe it says it on their website. Ah, I'm in the woods. I don't have cell phone service. Boo. <laughs> Every single would-be raw edge of wool that would have to be surged, any seam, anything like that on the inside of the snow crest is bound. And only a certain type of person that's making this garment would ask for that. They have to be a perfectionist. They have to say, I don't want to see any excess stitching. It has to look totally perfect on the inside. I don't think this adds an obscene amount of strength, putting it on seams or raw edges or anything like that, when you could surge it, which would then allow you to make the garment cheaper, which I feel like that is the number one complaint I see with the Snowcrest shirt jacket. I think most people at $600, they want more of a jacket than a shirt. So if they could even drop it by $50, I think that would be a huge value add to most people if it surged on the inside. Hello class, welcome to Wool School. My name is Michael, I will be teaching you today. Wool School is fun because it's insulating even when wet. Okay, so first we shall deal with coarse wool a la Filson, a la Mammoth. Coarse wool is an absolute tank to wear, to have, it lasts forever. It's very abrasion resistant, it doesn't pill easily, it doesn't tear easily, but the trade-off is, well, I guess there's two trade-offs. One is that it's rather rough against your skin, so people typically either have a liner on the jacket or they will wear it with long sleeves only. But the strength of coarse wool is why we see Filsons that are 100 years old, why we see wool jackets from the 40s that I can still order on eBay for 120 something dollars and wear them till I die. But, of course, we also have fine wool. And yes, I did leave one thing out, we'll get to that in a second. Fine wool is just a thinner wool in general. But these wools are very soft and luxurious and they drape beautifully at the sacrifice of pure strength. The difference between how tough the Filson is and the Duckworth, I don't actually know. I'd have to test both of them extensively and put them on sanders and grinders and everything like that, which we may do one day. That would be a lot of fun. But for lack of a better test, Filson is tougher, more abrasion resistant than Duckworth. However, Duckworth uses Rambouillet Merino wool, which is very fine, but it's also a long staple fiber. And when you have long staple fibers, you have more friction between the fibers for a longer amount of time, which gives it more strength, which gets it closer to Filson, but it is still soft and doesn't itch against the skin, which is a huge deal. But there's one more bonus with super fine fibers, and that is warmth to weight ratio. Cashmere per weight and everything is also warmer than both of these because it is a thinner fiber. And when you have thinner fibers, you can wrap them tighter together and you can trap air better in the yarns of the material that you have. It's just a fantastic insulation layer. So in summary, all of the ranchers at Heli Farm are wearing Duckworth and they're not complaining and they're in Montana when it's freezing cold. So I think my dad honestly would really, really love this because it's a light shirt jacket. He can go in the woods with it, not feel encumbered by it or anything like that. If there's any way they can make it cheaper, I think it's just going to blow most other shirt jacks or even a lot of jackets out of the water. Right now, I'm wearing the Weatherwool Anorak, which is, I feel like their flagship product. I feel it's the first thing everybody notices when you look at the website in their full weight lynx pattern. That's something that we need to talk about with Weatherwool because Weatherwool weaves their fabric like nobody else, really, no other brands. And although it does use the same fiber as Duckworth, couldn't be more different. This is a jacquard woven fabric. We won't talk about it a ton because I did do a video comparing specifically Filson to Weatherwool. It's very in-depth, so you could always check that if you'd like. But it's woven a different way in general. That's how we have this pattern, and Ralph could put smiley faces on it if he really wanted to. But it's woven this way because out of all the testing that Ralph did, he believes that weaving fabric like this makes it the best all around for everything. Wind resistance, water resistance, comfort, anything. I can't really say for sure which one is better because it depends on the twill, it depends on the fabric being used. But I can say it is definitely incredible. Incredible. And the second you touch Weatherwool fabric, you will understand why I am saying that if you haven't touched it before. This anorak is much more of a jacket than the Snowcrest, of course, and it's $655. And the shirt jack that Weatherwool offers is $550, but they also offer a CPO shirt for $475. And while I really like Duckworth and the Snowcrest, if someone asked me personally, which one would you recommend? I just, I feel like I'd be like, well, if you like the stuff. It's actually a really tough question. I would probably recommend Weatherwool regardless. The truth of the matter is, I don't really think they're competing for the same piece of the pie. Weatherwool is focused on outdoor jackets, really tops, and when Duckworth is more base layers, they use wool padding, which is very cool. Wool padding is fascinating. So the best of both worlds, if you really want to go die hard Rambouillet wool, is you do under layers, underwear, or padded jackets or something like that. That's Duckworth's cake, and Weatherwool's cake is things like this. 
So obviously, since the mammoth is mine, I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it. How do you define, you define, you define greatness? greatness? I just, I really want to stay totally neutral. Greatness, greatness is, is mammoth, mammoth. The first goal of the Mammoth was to live up to the name, the Mammoth. So there's a lot of hidden features like wind wall technology that we'll talk about in a second, wool lining we'll talk about in a second. The other goal of the Mammoth is, frankly, to be such a ridiculously good deal, packed with so many features at a price that we'll talk about at the end of this. It's, it's not the cheapest jacket on this list or anything like that. I'm not gonna pull a fast one on you. The goal is to be so ridiculously packed with features that there is, there's no other choice for the price. And the dream would be that it forces other bigger brands that have very expensive jackets with less features to lower their price or start a wool war. Wool, wool war, not world war. But the Mammoth body fabric is made out of 28 ounce wool and it's double layered. We have to talk about wind wall technology. I keep blah, blah, blah. The first layer, really the general layer, is all of these pockets are double pockets. One layer, then there's the back layer of the pockets, then there is the body fabric. So it is three layers, but we're saying double layered for the front here. And that double lining ends here for a specific reason. The first fun feature of this jacket is a lockable collar. You'll notice a little button slot right here. Boom, now your collar is locked with said button. And what I like to do when I walk in the woods and it's really cold is I pull the jacket up like this. So that way, if you have a hat, you could really just have some eye slits right here and keep your face warm. You could also obviously just wear it lower. You don't have to fully shrink into it, but lock and collar. Number two, if you know the history of this channel, you will know about the Corozo nut button. This right here is a Corozo nut button. At one point, these were the most popular buttons in the USA, in the world. Everybody was using these buttons, the Tagua nut button. They're incredibly strong, they don't scratch easily, they hold their color, and they have natural variations, because frankly, this is a Tagua nut that is chopped up fine, that is then polished, or dyed, dyed then polished, and that's it. So the inside of a nut is not the same on every nut, so this is not the same button on every button. Of course, the next feature of this jacket is custom knit storm cuffs, custom knit for the Iron Snail in Los Angeles. This, the fabric is also custom woven for the Iron Snail in Connecticut. Two by one knit, very, very beefy storm cuffs. So rain, wind, sleet, snow, whatever, doesn't go up into your sleeve and make you all cold and your arms all wet and stuff like that. See? Oh yeah, wow, look at that. Next up, when looking at this jacket, you'll probably notice there's one pocket that doesn't look like the other pockets. That is the odd duck pockets. This is an open pocket, so you can easily slide things in and pull them out, but I didn't want to have it open all the way because if you flip your jacket over or if you fall over or whatever, stuff always falls out of your pockets when you have dump dump pockets like that. Whether it be mittens, a whistle, a compass, a key, or keys, or something like that, we have this. Snap action lever. I don't have a whistle or mittens or anything like that, but essentially this is, I wouldn't use just, you know, a giant key ring, but essentially snap on whatever you want there and you can let it hang. I don't know why I'm demoing this jacket with the stupidest demo in the world, or you can just tuck it in. So that way, whatever you need won't fall out. You won't lose it. It's always clipped to your jacket. You can blow on the whistle. If I use the compass to direct yourself home, whatever it may be, that's always there waiting in the sidelines for you. Okay, now let's get to the lining. The lining and windwell technology are my favorite part of the jacket. What you are seeing before you is a nine ounce worsted wool suiting lining. There is wool and wool and there is worsted wool. What sounds funny, it's not funny. But wool and yarn, really just picture yarn that is fuzzy. Worsted yarn, we comb all of those short little fibers that make wool yarn fuzzy out. So you get a very smooth, very strong wool. And think about touching a fancy suit or something like that, the feeling of that wool. Well, this lining, I would say, is a little bit softer. If I told you this was a cotton lining, you would believe me. It feels the exact same. It's incredibly comfortable, soft, silky smooth. You could wear this with a t-shirt, not get itchy or anything like that. Soft and silky smooth, does that mean we're using finer fibers on the inside so it has a better warmth to weight on the inside and a coarse, tough exterior? <laughs> yeah. Of course, it has all of the benefits of wool baked right into it because it is wool. It still insulates when it's wet. It's very, very strong. It's antimicrobial, so you won't stink it up when you're wearing it. All the amazing properties of wool. Now, on the liner. Having a liner means you can add more pockets. So we have a pocket here. We also have another pocket on the other side. You'll see that I can't put my hand in there because I don't cut your pockets. You can cut your own pockets when you get it. And then, of course, we have the flagship feature of this jacket. The thing that I am most excited about, wind wall technology. I love cape coats. I love double layers of wool, double max if it's Filson, whatever it may be. 
I think it's amazing. With the inclusion of a worsted wool lining, we can essentially reorder the jacket and make a jacket sandwich instead of just a stack jacket. We don't want two layers of bread on the outside. We want the outer 28 ounce fabric to stop most of the wind, rain, water, sleet, whatever it may be. Then we have the lining that should block the rest of the wind unless you're in some absolutely insane wind. So the whole theory behind wind wall technology is we can effectively stop all of those outside elements from coming in and then when your jacket is sealed up nice and tight you have the benefit of your heavy 28 ounce wool being unencumbered insulation there's no wind pulling that trapped warm air away from your chest and back because it's all taken care of by the other two layers so when you're looking at the body fabric inside of this jacket it is not the same wool as this it's a second layer with a lining in between to hopefully stop all of the elements and basically act as a woolen blanket inside of your jacket like it was in a house and that's it. So I hope that made sense. The easiest way that I say it to people is it's an internal cape coat with an extra layer of wool sandwiched between it. As you're seeing this video, it will already be up on the website, but pre-orders open on Friday. Oops, Saturday now. They open on Saturday. Be sure to read all of the specifications, look at the pictures, see if you like it, ask me any questions, email me, DM me, whatever it may be. The retail price of the Mammoth is $550. I tried to get it as low as I possibly can, and I really wanted to make sure it was within $50 of the Filson Single Mac. The Filson Single Mac is $495, so this is $55 more, but that's the best I could do with the lining, with the action clip, with the 28 ounce wool, with it being made in America out of custom wool, with the custom knit sleeves, the big collar, the buttons, the Corozo nut buttons, the fact that it's a cape coat on the inside. So for what it is, I think this is the highest quality jacket that you can get at $550. It's the highest quality jacket that I could possibly make for $550. But yeah, anyways, that's the mammoth. I hope you like it. What I forgot to say was that with every launch of a new product, there's always a special edition. So yes, there is a special edition mammoth. Hand, foot, treadle, loomed, Scottish wool. It'll be textured and beautiful and absolutely insane. These are the yarns. I don't have a sample of the wool to show you. But if you're thinking, oh my gosh, well, I really want the special edition, but I don't want to miss out on the mammoth if I don't get the special edition, just buy the regular mammoth. And if you buy the special edition, if you get that and you have a mammoth and you want to return this mammoth, you can return the mammoth. I'll resell it for a discount and say it was lightly worn and everything like that, but the special edition is going to be one of the craziest jackets I think I've ever seen in my life. At least one of the craziest wools I've ever seen in my life. So I'm incredibly excited about that too. It will be more expensive, of course, because it's, you know, all the shebang. <laughs>